Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Two women among three in custody following raid gun seizure in Green Pond. Two women are among three suspected key members of a notorious only the family gang that were taken into custody following a major gun and ammunition seizure in Green Pond St. James on Thursday morning. An attorney of the three suspects say his client remains in custody but not charged and security personnel have returned to the scene to carry out further investigations. This information was confirmed by senior police sources. During the raid conducted by the police joint anti-gang task force, three rifles, four pistols and an estimated 200 rounds of ammunition were seized. During the operation, a Toyota Crown motor car was also removed from the premises. Head of Operations for St. James Superintendent Aaron Samuels reported that they also seized contraband, cash in Jamaican and United States currencies, and several electronic devices. This morning, members of this joint anti-gang task force, basically specialized ops and the military, um, carried out a targeted operation in the Green Pond area of St. James. During that operation, so the premises were searched where five weapons were found and a large quantity of ammunition. Three persons have been arrested thus far, I can confirm. Um, there are some other persons being targeted in this operation, so it is continuing and we should hopefully see some additional results. Man found dead with chop wounds in his Anatobe home. A man was found dead with several chop wounds to his body at his home in Anatobe, St. Mary. The assailant is reported on the run. Dead is Patrick Samuels, otherwise called Bongoriki, of PNP Lane in Anatobe in the parish. According to the Anatobe police, Samuels was murdered early Wednesday morning. Reports from that neighbors hear shouts for help coming from the deceased home. Upon their investigation, they saw Summers lying on the ground outside his one-bedroom wooden house with chop wounds. The police were summoned and he was taken to the Anatobe Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Information is that Summers is not known to be in any altercation with anyone and a motive for his murder has not been ascertained. Investigations continue. Six in custody after seizure of firearms, notebook, 14 cell phone with overseas resident information in Portland. Six men were arrested after two homemade firearms, a notebook and 14 cell phones containing information about overseas residents were seized during an operation at Orit Lane, Buff Bay, Portland on Wednesday. Reports from the Port Mary Police are that about 1.30 p.m., lawmen carried out an operation in the area when the premises was searched and the two firearms found. A further search of the property revealed one notebook and one Samsung cell phone containing the identity and contact information of persons living overseas. Thirteen additional cell phones were found in a bag beside the dwelling. Another premises in the area was searched and the six men were taken into custody. Their identities are being retailed pending further investigation. Church murder trial, stepson walks, trigger man does not take the stand. Javan Garwood, who was charged with the murder of his stepmother, Angelo Garwood, as she worshipped in church, has been found not guilty. This after the court told the court no further evidence would be presented against Garwood, Chief Justice Bryan, then directed jurors to deliver a verdict of not guilty. The court's case collapsed after convicted triggerman Dwight Prince Brigham did not take the stand. Popular party promoter implicated in in-sports fraud granted $10 million bail. Popular promoter of the French Connection and Target events, Andrew Wright, who was implicated in an alleged 222 million fraud, was on Thursday granted bail after a renewal bail application was made by his lawyer, King's Counsel Peter Champagne. Wright was granted bail in the amount of $10 million with strict reporting conditions. He will appear in the Supreme Court on September 25, 2023. Allegations are that Wright was involved in a scheme that saw more than 60 million being defrauded by the state run entity in sports. In making the application for a bill, his lawyer pointed out to the court that his client was not the subject of a freeze order in relation to his bank accounts. His lawyer submitted that his client would hardly be in any position to interfere or influence the course of the police investigation, as was asserted by the prosecution. Wright is charged with larceny as a servant, conspiracy to defraud, and breaches of the proceeds of Crime Act with seven others who were previously granted bail. Wright has consistently denied the allegations. Wright is also being represented by Nico Pagan, who appeared with Peter.
JT is still awaiting formal response from MOF in relation to compensation restructuring exercise. President of the Jamaica Teachers Association, Lassandra Harrison, says she is still awaiting a response from the Minister of Finance in regards to a submission made to the government on May 30 arising from the compensation restructuring exercise. Speaking at the 30th Golden Torch Award for Service to Education on Tuesday, Mrs. Harrison noted that teachers are deserving of not only recognition for their services, but financial rewards. Mrs. Harrison noted that having the issues addressed will lead to improvements in the pensions of retired teachers. She added that teachers desire to retire with dignity and grace without having to depend on family members. Hence, my continued call for the government to treat with the anomalies from the compensation review. A favorable response in writing is awaited from the Ministry of Finance read the submissions made on May 30 regarding the graduate and the remote inducement allowance, which is long overdue. Even as we reschedule a meeting date, read the taxation submission being currently pursued. These when fixed, followed by system-wide recalculations, will see many of you, my colleagues, receiving at least that which you have agreed to, as well as present you in a better place as you are, some of you are in the departure terminal for retirement. Not only are you, my colleagues, desirous of that matter being resolved, which will affect your pension, but that our employers agree in principle, practice, and on paper to a suggestion that has been made some years now that payment of pension be confined within a turnaround period of no more than 90 days. More than 1,000 Jamaicans arrested in fraud cases between 2018 and 2022 3.1 billion involved, DCP Bailey stated. Between 2018 and 2022, more than 1,000 Jamaicans were arrested in relation to fraud cases involving more than Jamaican 3.1 billion and US 31 million. This is according to head of the country's crime and security portfolio, Deputy Commissioner of Police, Fitz Bailey. Speaking at the Bankers Association annual anti fraud seminar on Thursday morning, DCP Bailey noted, that the accused individuals were arrested by the fraud squad, MOCA, and the Financial Investigations Division. DCP Bailey said the monetary value of the fraud surpasses Jamaican $3 billion. Between 2018 and 2022, the fraud squad has a, had a total of 2,932 reported cases, and they made 805 arrests for fraud. The data is broken down in what you call electronic and general fraud. The major organized crime and anti-corruption branch or agency for the same period had 79 cases of fraud and corruption reported and a total of 180 arrests were made and they had 155 convictions. And in terms of the financial crime, financial investigation division, as you know, they are mostly focused on asset forfeiture. Within the same period, 105 cases were reported, 56 arrests, and 17 convictions. And in terms of the cost that we have identified over the period, fraud cases reported over the said period accounted for over 3.189 billion Jamaican dollars, 31 million, 261,000 US dollars, and over 252,000 pounds. In terms of cases in court, and in terms of the value, it's over 1.2 billion in Jamaican and US 5 million. And those are cases for forfeiture in the court. And in terms of cases that have been adju adjudicated on, monies that have been seized or forfeited, one over 164 million Jamaican dollars, 13 million US. And this has been successfully achieved by FID. Please remember to subscribe, 